All right, <clears throat> who wants to see this old girl? I got this mudded in, blocking it out. I got a blocking out a profile like this, it's as unusual, I guess, is the proper term. It's blocked down pretty good up until in here. It's kind of hard to get in here. When you're blocking out a profile like this, I'm using a 36 grit on a round block. And actually half the time I've got it in there kind of at an angle, not straight in there. It's not perfectly round. And then I twist it a little. Various technique there, and it's subtle technique. So we're grinding on that. Oh, we've got one marker light assembly omitted. Now to get a wipe of fiberglass, just a slight wipe. It's just a little bit recess on purpose. So we're kicking its ass. <coughs> I'm gonna block both these quarter panels out. There's a couple dingers that were caused by moving, shipping, everything else. <coughs> this is ready to go. We'll give it a last. We'll blow it off and pack it and six in it. It's almost ready to go. Uh, all of the lead work came out great. We got it primered. We're doing a swoop on it just to get the final details we want. Trunk load's in really decent shape other than that nasty edge. Uh, let me see. We're going to move on to some rock panel issues and alignment issues on the quarter panel down there. Um, what we're actually going to do, and I know if you pay attention to SWRNC, Pete used the same technique up here on a car. Uh, somebody had welded the solid, okay? And he went back and cleaned it all up and he welded it solid again, but properly. And then it came in with a uh, die grinder and he cut that groove so that factory groove was back there again. It looked like it gave that proper appearance. <coughs> That's what's going to end up happening on both sides on the rocker. I can assure you that. Got some holes to weld up on the rocker where the trim used to go. Uh, John, our helpful handy part timer, he actually did this lead. I started up here and showed him how to shape and how to pull it in there. And then I cut him loose, let him do it. He wanted to learn. One of our next things we got to deal with is some of this rot. Some of this will be taken out by simple wire wheels to surface rust. But we get down into here, you can see the mud to right here. So I'm going to have to build this corner. It'll be, it'll be a Z break, okay? Put this in the stretcher, put this in the shrinker, tack it in place. Same thing right there. We got some more over here. <coughs> there we go. Sorry, not much voice in the mornings. Uh, this is rotted pretty thoroughly. So we'll cut it right to that edge. Cut this piece, put a new one in. Clean it up a bunch. This piece has got to come out. You can see a hole there. This wouldn't have been bad had they used fiberglass instead of just mud. Uh, this side is filed down. Got a little more up there to file and fill. Nineteen seventy one, Monte Carlo. We call her Scarlet. Had a lot more welding, a lot more fabricating in the trunk pan, quarter pan, and the back section of the car. Past that. We're ready to get all the rest of the sheet metal over here and everything in slick sand. That's the goal this week. Tail light bezels. 71 Monte Carlo, trunk pan. Let's go ahead and get some light on the situation. We got this fit reasonably well. We need some adjusting up in there. We get finish welded in. Then we go underneath and spot weld it there and along there and pull out together. 
Not a lot of spot welds, just enough spot welds. Okay. We'll have to drill holes through the pan at the points where the brace goes. What would that be? Yeah, like right in here. Do some spot welds along the bottom of the pan. There's a rib right along here. We'll drill some holes in it, do some spot welds. And then we bring our attention over here. Body mount good, body mount reasonable. So we'll shave that off, put a new bolt there, or a new nut there. Um, do some cleanup. A lot of this isn't rotted out. A lot of this is now surface. That's surface. So we'll grind it down, we'll treat it, we'll pour 15 it, well, whatever we gotta do. Um, trunk pan's about together. John actually hung out yesterday and finished that up. Light bezels, uh, when you put the new quarters on, you gotta drill new holes. This one there, this one down there. Now at this point, I've gotta twist it around and get it to fit. If I can't get a perfect fit this way, we shave some steel, we push stuff together, we bring lines together how they need to, to fit our bezels. Whatever it takes. The bezels are exactly what they are, okay? Um, usually pop metal. Um, I call them pieces of junk, but they're really not. I mean, they were cast out of pop metal, uh, but they're, they're a static part. So now, we make the sheet metal work with the bezel and make it look all like it's supposed to. <coughs> Old fisher bodies, come on, we all know this. Fisher bodies don't always fit together perfect from the factory. It's a assembly line production, it's go, 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 and it's production work is exactly what it is. We restore them. We, unless otherwise, constrained by time, budget, or owner's desires, make those parts look like they were meant to be there and only fit that one car, like it's a one-off. That's sort of the concept of, of some of your restoration work. Now there's some restoration work where uh, you guys will put it back in exactly the mishappen situation it was built in. Factory correct restorations, it's, and that's an art, fine art all itself. You go factory correct, numbers matching restorations, that's, that's beyond the scope and thought process of what I even want to pretend to deal with. Oh, let me see, we're beating down the last barriers of metal finish, okay. I showed you that. We got all the parts of the car here from the old shop. They were stored over at my residence, the old shop. Uh, we brought them over. There was trim holes. We went ahead and filled them with some weld. I've got to cut this corner out and rebuild that corner of the door frame, of the door skin. I gotta flip it over. See that? I gotta flip it over and rebuild that section of the door frame too. It's rotted all the way through. Got a bad egg here. I got a lot of it out by using heat and a stud puller and some other things. I'm gonna to try to get some tools down inside the door. That's a real hard spot from the backside to get to. I don't want to just fill that in. That's not that's not what we're about here. I got a spot here and I gotta figure out exactly what's going on. I think the door just got smashed and we can actually hammer and dolly 90% of this back to where it belongs. I don't think it's rotted. I mean I got lots of shiny metal. I just I think this car got in a wreck on <coughs> this passenger side and that fender was probably replaced too. Maybe not, but I got a feeling that that was some mishap. <sighs> Everything else though. That fender was down in the old shop. Uh, trunk lid, it's in slick sand. It's got its imperfections, of course, but whatever. Door, it's in slick sand. Uh, I got a little whoopty on this body line right here. See that? We'll pull tape 
across and get a hard style line there. Same thing up here. This one's just pretty crisp. So the <clears throat> same thing on the trunk we'll do to make sure this line is perfect. We're in pretty great shape. We're in real all right, so around the shop, you guys have kind of seen as things get more sophisticated, we have more, you know, we got Jeremy and John running around, two competent souls to carry out uh, their tasks. We've had a lot of, this is where we're at. Now this is where we're at. Next is his is where we're at. So uh, I'm trying to slow down a little bit and show you as we're chopping into this old girl where we're at. All right, so there's the door. There's the door skin. I cut out the whole section. I wire wheeled it down. Um, I'm going to have to replace some of this steel in here, so I'll cut this out, and then I'll coat everything. I'll have to coat this with a non-corrosive. I actually wire wheeled the rest away. So kind of this is where we're at. I tend to chop a little flag in the corner where it hangs over. So you more easily wrap it. And I'm fitting this. Now when you're doing sheet metal, this is 20 gauge, okay? The door was 20 gauge. The sheet metal I'm using is 20 gauge. You don't want a big gap. You got a big gap, you get a lot of blowout and a lot of extra heat that warps. So take your time. I'm just taking a pair of snips, a grinder, and a file to clean up my edges. This, if I had my druthers, I'd actually have rounded that corner. You don't always get heat here wants so there's that and then as it goes in there you see it's got some bendy bendy to it so I want to make sure that bend isn't just on this leading edge but actually runs through the whole plane of the piece because that's the plane that's the plane that's going to follow across that door so I want that whole piece not just the edge where I'm welding it but the whole piece to be rippled like that uh, once I get my fitment, now all I've got to do is smooth it out and get that, that ripple that's in that piece of skin all the way across. Then I can stitch it in place, bend it over, grind down my welds, and apply body filler. What little body filler we're going to need. It's one nice thing about 20 gauge. 18 gauge is better because you can really get a good metal finish. 16 gauge is a mother to work with, but you get some of the best metal finish from sheet metal. The thicker you go, the easier it gets. The easier it is to weld, the less warping you get, so forth and so on. So the older, car, older the car you work on, the easier it's going to be to deal with. <sighs> yeah, I'm pretty sure the quarter panels are 20 gauge as well, which is nice. A lot of them get stamped out of 22 or 24, which doesn't sound like it. 